Welcome brave souls to Fear File Chronicles, your one-way ticket to spine-chilling stories and terrifying tales. Tonight, we'll be diving into the darkest corners of the human mind with the story. The Gravekeeper's Oath, Part 3, penned by the twisted mind of True God 92. Together, we'll explore the unexplained and face our deepest fears. But before we begin, if you enjoy trembling and terror, be sure to hit that like button, share this video with your fellow fear fanatics, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click the bell notification so you never miss an eerie episode. Your support truly means the world to us, so feel free to leave a comment below to join the Fear File Chronicles community. Now, without further ado, let's unravel the mysteries of the unknown together as we delve into tonight's fear-inducing story, The Gravekeeper's Oath, Part 3. Dim the lights and prepare yourself for a chilling journey into the Fear File Chronicles. With lightning flashing through the sky and thunder crashing above, Grace lay in bed, holding her blankets close with tears rolling down her face. She knew he was gone. He was never coming back. She knew it was now all up to her. She knew she had to fight not only for her own survival, but also for the fate of the dead and those who mourned them. Lying there in her bed, she recalled the events that had led to his cruel fate. The gravekeeper was an amazing man. He had helped her, taught her, and guided her along her newfound path. He was the one who took her in at the request of her dying father. He was the one who held her high and taught her how to survive. He gave her the knowledge to care for the dead and to assist those who were still alive. He had given her a purpose, and now he was gone. It was all her fault. It had been a typical morning. She was cleaning the debris from the night before, welcoming guests and guiding them towards the resting places of their loved ones. Everything seemed perfect. The gravekeeper was in a great mood, seeming more youthful. Grace even saw a smile come across his face once or twice as he walked the grounds, patrolling. He was assisting those who needed it and guiding souls that found their way to him. The souls wanting to pass to the afterlife were always put to rest softly and gently. Grace had never seen this side of the gravekeeper. For the month she spent here, the majority of her time was spent in the cottage studying. Then she was out at night, patrolling the grounds. She didn't do much during the day other than study to harness her newfound skills. However, on this particular morning, the gravekeeper asked her to accompany him as they walked the grounds. It was simply to have a conversation about who she was before, who her father was. He asked her about how she grew up. He asked her many things about her past. All the while, she could sense something in his voice that made her nervous. She couldn't quite place it. Was he trying to learn more so he could better help her in the future? Or was he nearing the end of his life? If that was the case, she didn't know what she would do without him. Stopping in the middle of the path, she took his arm and turned him to face her. In a questioning tone, she looked into his eyes and said, What is this all about? Why are you acting like this this morning? Is everything okay? I'm honestly scared that you're going to tell me you're going to die or something. Please, stop it with kind words and be honest with me. Tell me I'm not getting any better or something. With kindness in his voice, he told her, I'm just happy. Since I took you in, I found peace knowing that all of this will be forever protected and cared for. With that, he began walking the path again. Stunned, Grace followed close by his side. As they approached the main entrance, they saw an older woman standing in the frame of the gate swaying back and forth in a sort of grotesque dance. The gravekeeper rushed to her, reaching out as he got closer. Suddenly, a burst of fire erupted from the woman's body, throwing the gravekeeper back to the ground. Yelling out in pain, he lifted his arm to find it burnt away to the elbow. Struggling to his feet, he weakly looked at Grace. With a sad smile, he yelled, Run! Save yourself! You need to stay alive! It's going to be up to you to keep the grounds safe once I'm gone. He turned towards the demonic flames and ran into them. 
With all of his strength and determination, he fought the demon, giving Grace a chance to escape. The demon was toying with him more than fighting, letting the gravekeeper land hits, giving him a false sense of hope. Growing bored with the fight, the demon grabbed him by the head and waistline. With no effort, it pulled him in half, causing blood and viscera to spatter the ground. Without a second thought, it bit the gravekeeper's head from his destroyed body, swallowing it whole. Trying to process what had just happened, Grace found it hard to breathe. In a panic, she took a few steps forward, calling out to the gravekeeper. Getting no response, she walked closer and called out again. She saw the headless torso fly through the air. It landed in front of her with a sickening, wet, slapping sound. Screaming in fear, Grace turned and ran towards the cottage as fast as she could. As she passed the last of the graves, she saw it just a few yards away. Not stopping, she ran harder and faster. As she got to the door, she felt a clawed hand grab her leg. With a force unlike any she had ever felt, she was pulled backwards. The demon took off running, dragging her across the ground face down. It stopped abruptly and threw her into the air. Feeling weightless, Grace opened her eyes to see she was flying. When she hit the ground, she lost consciousness. Waking up some time later, Grace saw the sun setting. With what little strength she could muster, she stood. On weak, shaking legs, Grace surveyed her surroundings to see most of the graveyard in ruins. Sobbing, Grace tried to walk towards the cottage, only to realize that it had been burnt to nothing more than ash. Turning towards the woods, she made her way to find some kind of cover. After walking for nearly two hours, she came across one of the secret hideaways the gravekeeper had shown her not too long ago. Pushing the small door open, she slowly walked in and lit a lamp to see what was inside that might help her. Looking around with tired eyes, she saw it. The one thing she knew would help her survive the night. It looked like nothing more than a small shovel, but to Grace, it was a sign. She knew that he had left it there for her. He knew this day was coming, and he wanted her to be ready. With newfound energy, Grace snatched it up, holding it tightly in one hand. With the other, she summoned her grimoire. The ancient book floated at chest level, glowing with a fierce purple light. With a flick of her fingers, the book opened, pages flipping wildly, then abruptly stopping on the pages that she needed. Clearing her throat, she spoke. Please work. Raising the shovel high into the air, she commanded, By the power of earth and sky, I call upon the strength to rise. With this spell, I imbue this gift, with the power to endure and win. May it be as strong as the mountains, and unyielding as the sea. May it be filled with the power to overcome all adversity. May it never rest until the job is done. So say I, the gravekeeper. At first, nothing had happened. Feeling defeated, Grace lowered the shovel and closed her eyes as she began to tremble and cry. Then, all at once, with a flash of purple light, the grimoire burst into flames. It fell to the floor, turning to ash. Opening her eyes, she saw what had happened and cried out in fear and panic. Then, a sense of peace settled over her. The shovel in her hand started to glow with the very same purple light as the now-destroyed grimoire. Lifting it to eye level, she could see all the spells and teachings flowing over the handle like a beautiful river. Rejuvenated, Grace took to the graveyard to search for the horrible demon. Sprinting from row to row of headstones, she came across a few lesser creatures. With swift and deadly movements, she returned them to hell. It wasn't long before the demon felt her presence growing closer. Letting out a guttural growl, it commanded its underlings to charge out and kill Grace. With her newfound strength and abilities, Grace was more than capable of destroying his army. She called down holy flames, burning most to ash and using her shovel to cut others down. Looking towards the demon who had caused this destruction, she let out a scream and ran towards it, starting to chant. In furorum demon, to revocus un divinisti. Ingridimini regnum abissi et dissidite regnum meum undivinistis. Reaching the foot of the beast, she thrust her shovel into its belly, twisting as she did. 
In a fit of rage, the demon swung its claws at her head, only to be held back by an inky black tendril pulling it to the ground. Pulling the shovel from its guts, Grace jumped back to watch. Laying on the ground, the demon tried to pull its arm free to no avail. Screaming in frustration, it bit down on its arm in an attempt to free itself. As it did this, the ground shook and five more nightmare tendrils erupted up. Wrapping the demon's body up, the tendrils with a force never seen before, crushed the demon into the ground, bursting its body open and killing it instantly. Raising her hand to the body, Grace summoned a heavenly flame, burning the body of the demon into nothing. Turning away, Grace walked to where the gravekeeper's cottage once stood, digging the tip of the shovel into the burnt ground. Grace used what power she had left and rebuilt the cottage with a wave of her hand. Standing there, she watched as logs slowly floated from the woods, laying themselves down to form the shell of the home. As the logs finished forming the walls and roof of the cottage, Grace took a deep breath and focused her energy on creating a fire in the hearth. Sparks flew from her fingertips as she flicked her wrist, and soon flames were dancing in the fireplace. Feeling a sense of satisfaction wash over her, Grace stepped back to admire her handiwork. The cottage was small, but cozy, with a thatched roof and a sturdy wooden door. She had always loved the way his cottage looked in the woods, and now she had finally made her own. As she turned to leave, Grace heard a rustling in the bushes. Her heart pounded in her chest. Had another demon followed her here? But then a familiar face appeared, and she relaxed. Isabel! Grace exclaimed, embracing her friend. What are you doing here? Isabel grinned. I heard you were living or working here, and I couldn't resist checking on you. When I got here, I saw the carnage everywhere. I was worried about you, but it looks like you're more than capable of protecting yourself. Grace smiled, feeling grateful for Isabel's concern. Together, the two of them explored the cottage, admiring the simple furnishings and the soft glow of the fire. As they sat down by the hearth, Grace felt a sense of contentment she had never known before. This was her home now, a place where she could rest and recharge before facing the challenges of the outside world. Now with Isabel by her side, she knew she would never be alone. Laying in bed, she could hear the storm dying out. Getting up, she made her way to the small kitchen and found Isabel sitting at the table, staring at a wax-sealed letter. Sitting across from her, she asked who it was from. Handing it to her, Isabel said that she didn't know. It was just laying there when she left their bed. Lifting it up, Grace watched as words formed on the outside, spelling out the gravekeeper's oath. Opening it, she saw a contract like the one he was forced into. With a smile, she bit the end of her thumb, causing it to bleed, and pressed it down on the parchment. Floating up into the air, a voice spoke saying, The oath has been taken. Now you, Grace, are the immortal guardian of these hallowed grounds. Smiling, she looked over at Isabel. For a moment, she thought she saw him standing behind Isabel, smiling at her. But when she blinked, he was no longer there. Even though he was gone, she knew he'd always be watching over her. Well, my friends, we've reached the end of tonight's chilling tale, The Gravekeeper's Oath, Part 3, by the talented True God 92. I hope you've enjoyed our descent into darkness and that you'll carry a piece of the Fear File Chronicles with you as you drift into uneasy dreams. If our story left you shivering and shaking, don't forget to like this video, share it with others who crave a good scare, and subscribe to the Fear File Chronicles for more haunting horrors. Remember to hit the bell notification so you're always among the first to know when a new nightmare awaits. As always, we appreciate your support and would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Sharing your fears and frights with us truly means a lot, so don't be shy to engage with our sinister community. Until next time, remember to embrace the darkness, for it is within the shadows that our most terrifying stories are born. Good night, and stay scared.